everybody, so we're out in the shop and today we're going to be working on the San Mai build. So to give you a rundown of what we've done so far, we went ahead and forged the pieces that we then forged together. <laughs> so it was a whole process. Uh, we went ahead and we used Railroad Spike and ADCRV2. The core is the ADCRV2. The outer layers are the Railroad Spike and I forged those pieces flat and then I took those, cleaned them up, and forged all of that together to then make this knife. So everything that's in this has been forged in some way, which is absolutely awesome. It's a lot of work, but it was absolutely worth it. And we have the rough profile going on right now, so we know where the handle is, we know where the blade's gonna be. But today we are gonna work on, you know, utilizing the 2x72 and a few other things to get the profile really refined. And then we're going to do bevels, we're going to heat treat, we're going to acid etch so you can actually see how it's going to turn out. We're going to do all that in this video because I want y'all to get the full effect. So we're going to jump into it, we're going to get it knocked out. So right here we are just focusing on refining the profile of the knife here. And I already have an idea of how this is going to turn out. I mean this was forged to profile and then I went ahead and put it on paper and kind of refined that profile on paper so that I knew where I was going to grind this back to. You know, I, I don't want to take much material off. I really like the profile of the knife. This is really just going to be focusing on ergonomics at this point. Making sure that the finger choil area is where it needs to be. Making sure that the handle is shaped how it needs to be making sure the blade is shaped how it needs to be. You know, this is where we focus on those particular parts of the knife. And I'm gonna put this in my hand multiple times because I wanna make sure that that handle is shaped just how I want it to be shaped. Because ergonomics are a huge part of knife making. If you make an uncomfortable knife, nobody will use it. Uh, this is one of the first knives that I've done that has this much of an arch to the spine where when you're holding the handle it's kind of curved down quite a bit from the blade. Uh, I have not done one of those yet so this is kind of a, a different style of knife than what I've done in the past and it actually turns out to be very comfortable. And what was nice about forging this to shape is I barely had to grind on this knife at all. It was really just refining the profile and not so much removing a bunch of material to make some different knife versus what was forged. So definitely liked that process. Saved me a lot of time. Now right here we're going to go ahead and grind in a 45 degree angle. We're basically just going to grind all the way to that center cutting edge that we marked on there with our scribe. And what this is going to do is it's going to set that cutting edge into place so that all we need to do is just focus on feathering the bevels back from that as high up on the blade that we decide to do. Now we'll tell you whenever you get into actually feathering this back you want to make sure that you don't go so high on the blade that whenever you get up to your belt progression you end up going too high. So let's say you want to go two-thirds of the way up the side of the knife. Well on your lowest grip belt you only want to grind that up to about two-thirds of the way up. The reasoning behind that is as you do your belt progression from this 40 grit belt up to let's say 100 grit, 200 grit, 400 grit, depending on how high you go, you want to make sure that you leave enough material on there so that as you're going up to higher grits, 
by the time you end on your last belt, you're then at that three quarters of the way up. Because if you go to three quarters of the way up on this rough belt, and then you start trying to get those grinding lines out, it's just gonna keep bringing your bevels up higher and higher and higher to where you're almost at the spine. So start with the first belt, go up to about two thirds of the way, and then as you progress up to higher belts, you'll slowly get up to that three quarters of the way up. Just something to think about. Right here we're using a medium scotch Brite belt. We're going to go ahead and really smooth out the bevels from the previous belt, which was that 40 grit belt. And this is just going to be getting them nice and smooth in preparation for heat treat because it is nice to have a nice smooth knife when it comes time to heat treat so that you don't have as much work to do after heat treat. Now we're going to go ahead and do 3 16 inch holes for all of this because we're doing two brass 3 16 pins and then we're going to do a brass 3 16 lanyard tube. I typically do quarter inch lanyard tube but I'm going to be using a thinner paracord for this and I didn't feel that it needed the larger lanyard tube so I want the smaller one. Now when it comes to heat treating, we of course are going to go up to non-magnetic, just a little bit past that. And my forge that we have here, I do have a piece of angle iron in there as a baffle so the flame isn't directly on the blade. And then we're going into 120 degree peanut oil. I've had good success with peanut oil, so I'll continue to use it until I get Parks 50. Now as you can hear here, we've got a nice hardened blade. That's what we're going for, something that really escapes the file very easily, and this does that. So we're going to go ahead and clean up the blade at this point. I've already tempered the knife, which was for two hours at 375 degrees, and it just did one temper cycle for that full two hour time. And then we went ahead and decided to get this all cleaned up. We're using a 100 grit belt right here. I end up using a 200 grit belt and then the scotch Brite belt on with the medium grit scotch Brite belt. Get to that finish and then we go ahead and put it into the acid. And this is acid that is warmed up to about 80 degrees. You want to warm it up. You don't want it to be... Uh, just room temperature. You can see right here a little bit of the actual line for the two different metals. But you'll get to see the, the full effect in the outro. Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up today's vlog. Uh, this is a couple of days later because I've been thinking about a few things with this knife and uh, of course I'm in my my RV work shirt, but I didn't feel like changing shirts just to do this outro. <laughs> now, I want to give a shout out. So I had talked about the comment in the last video uh, where a YouTube commenter subscriber uh, told me to go ahead and either get flatter stock before trying to forge weld it or 
the way I interpreted it, flattening my stock to make it thinner before I forge it to make it a lot easier on myself. And I really appreciated that. I went over and checked out that person's YouTube channel and realized they didn't really have many subscribers even though they do awesome stuff. So, uh, Tyrell Knife Works. Uh, Ty, I don't know if you go by Tyrell, Ty or Rel or that's even your actual name, but Tyrell Knife Works. I'm gonna leave a link for his YouTube channel in the description below. I think y'all should go check it out because he does awesome work. And I think that if y'all like what I do, y'all are really gonna like what he does and he deserves way more subscribers than he has. So guys, go over there, give him a boost. Subscribe to his channel. I think y'all really like it. Now, when it comes to this knife right here, let's go ahead and look at this bad boy. So you see it right there, those awesome layers that we have there. It's actually decently defined even though I didn't do like something like 15 and 20 or something like that in between it, I'm actually really proud of that. And I do like this knife shape. I think this is going to turn out a, into a, just a very beautiful knife and it's for me. I'm going to keep it, especially because it did this awesome burn to me. But one of the reasons why I'm actually going to keep this is because right here, you can't really see it that much. There's a little bit of what looks like a separation. And uh, I'm not gonna sell a knife to somebody that's got that. Now, the finger choil area is probably the area that gets the least amount of abuse on the whole entire knife. Now, the good thing is, right here, it's completely forge welded. The whole entire blade forge welded amazingly. Zero gaps, zero things that you can feel. The whole entire spine forge welded really nicely. It's just this little bitty area and I could probably grind through that but you don't know. I'm not going to grind through it and make the little area right here too thin and kind of is what it is. But I'm still going to finish the knife because it is for me. I'm going to keep it and why would I sell my first forge welded knife? That would be crazy. I'm not going to do that. But guys, this thing is just turning out to be awesome. I'm so happy that I decided to just push myself into it and try it out. Uh, it turned out way better than what I thought it was going to because I thought for my first one, nothing was going to stick, nothing was going to work out. So the fact that this much worked out is just amazing. Um, and a testament to just putting yourself out there and trying to do it. Now, the next forge welded thing that we're going to end up doing is going to be a... I guess it would be considered a GOMAI. It's going to be an 80 CRV2 core, two 15 and 20 layers. Well, 15 and 20, so 80 CRV2, 15 and 20, 1080. So that's going to be the layers that you get. And that is going to be absolutely awesome. I can't wait to actually try that out. Um, you can let me know in the comment section. I think that that's a GOMAI. I don't know. Yes, I'll do some more research, but that's the goal. Now, we are waiting for that steel to come in because I don't have any 15 and 20. So I'm gonna be waiting on that. In between that, if we have a gap between this knife and that knife, I'll just make another knife. So I've got an idea of one that I wanna make that's out of that uh, textured 5160 that I did. And we might just put that in as a filler or I might release the video of the little EDC that I'm doing. I don't know just yet, but guys, the next video that we're going to have on this is attaching the handle scales, shaping the handle scales. We're going to go ahead and do all of that in one video uh, instead of splitting that into two. So you'll have that. Guys, that's pretty much the end of this one. If you would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video, or one of my other videos. And guys, if you have not yet, bottom corner, hit that subscribe button and definitely go check out Tyrell Knifeworks channel. Y'all are going to love it. Guys. Thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Thank y'all for checking this out. Y'all have an amazing day. Stay safe. I'll catch y'all next time.